Let us be like the people of Nineveh. The people of the Ninevites, when Jonah was sent to them from the God of Israel, he said, the God of Israel is saying to you that your wrongdoings have reached my throne and I am absolutely angry. I uh, under the freedom of speech and under the freedom of religion, we all have the right to express our concerns. And as a spiritual and a, a religious figure, I have the right also to express the concerns and also to be also uh, aware and and protective of the well-being of my people. And I have the right to express that. The only reason, the only reason we said what we said was only for one thing that was burning us from within. And that is written in the psalmist book, Psalm 69, verse 9, says, Because zeal for your house has eaten me up. Because zeal for your house has eaten me up. Psalm 69, 9. It was that zeal for the house of the Lord. And I'll say, I'm the number one sinner. I am the unworthy servant of the Lord Jesus. However, it was that zeal for his house, the Lord Jesus Christ, that made me speak and cry out. And since the Lord Jesus has set me free, and since the Lord Jesus has purchased me with his precious blood, and since the Lord Jesus has called me the Son of God and made me the Son of God, and since the Lord Jesus has given me that freedom, then no one on the face of this planet can shut me up except God. My beloveds, we are living in the end of times. 100%. 100%. The other thing, I would like to thank everyone that has been sending their, um, their love, their appreciation, their support, their respect, whether it was through emails, through phone calls, through messages. Look, may the Lord Jesus bless you, but I'll say this. What we said last Sunday, I did it for my Lord Jesus Christ, no one else, with all love and respect to all of you, my beloveds. But I did it for my Lord. But what made me happy? What made me happy about the emails? And we were flooded. We were flooded with emails, phone calls, and messages. We were flooded with them. What the only thing that made me happy out of all of those who have sent their love and respect and, and, and support, one thing, there are still good people. There are still beautiful people. There are still people that have a living conscience and a beautiful heart. May God bless you all. And by the way, the messages came from Christians and different faiths, not only Christians. I want to say to everyone, may God bless you. And may the Lord Jesus Christ always guide you into the truth. For he is the truth and there is no one else but him. But I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I am happy for one thing, as I said, I still see there are people that do care about seeking the truth and reaching to that truth. May God show you that truth. And Jesus Christ said it in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. There have been some views that were trying to attack what we said. And some of those views came within the church. 
and some of the so-called leaders of the church. That does not worry me one bit. That does not worry me one bit because I have nothing to lose. But I'll say one thing. The Lord Jesus was attacked by church leaders, no one else. So what has changed? Absolutely nothing. The history is repeating itself one more time. The Lord Jesus came. What has he done for humanity? I am a sinner. It is not about me. It is about the Lord. It is about Jesus Christ, my beloved. Let no one boost. Let all glory be given to the name of Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of all lords. But the Lord Jesus came. What did he do to the Israelite nation or to the people of his time? He raised their dead. He healed their sick. He cleansed their lepers. He opened the eyes of those who were blind. He did all wonders and great miracles. He was nothing but goodness, love, mercy, compassion, kindness, humility in its perfection, totally illustrated in its perfection and its beauty. And at the end of his missionary work on the face of this planet, which took just over three years from the age of 30 to the age of 33, where he embraced the cross, which he came to do the will of his dad. Dad, I came to die and save and redeem the entire world. I came to do your will, Father. Therefore, it worries me not if people love me or hate me, if people be supportive or against me, because I did not come to please people. I came to please my heavenly Father only. And every Christian, if you call yourself a Christian, then you need to walk in the footprints of the Good Shepherd, the head of the church, there is only one head to the church, and that is Christ the King. All of us church leaders, and I am a church leader, and what I'm saying, I'm saying it to myself before I say it to anyone else. So please, once again, do not take what I'm saying out of context. But if, even if you do, I do not care with all love and respect. I do not care. From the highest rank in the church to the lowest, we are nothing but servants. And I should add to that, we are useless and hopeless servants. Jesus, if the Lord Jesus had said it to someone like Simon Peter, Philip, Andrew, Bartholomew, and the 12 apostles who are the pillars in the church of Christ, if the Lord had said to them, whatever you do, remember one thing, you are nothing but useless servants. If Jesus, our Lord and God, said it to the 12 pillars in the church of Christ, then who am I and you, my beloved leader? Who am I and you? We need to humble ourselves. Before the Lord. So the Lord came. And he did everything that only God can do. And what did the leaders of the temple, of the church, of the Old Testament, what did they do? Caiaphas and those who were like him got up and said, crucify him. And they said, we do not want this son of the carpenter, son of Mary. We do not want this man to be king over us. We want Caesar. Caesar is our king. Well, my beloved Caiaphas and the likes, what did Caesar do to you? He enslaved you. He was like a, like a vampire, sucked your blood and trampled you under his foot. But the one who was all love, 
kindness and mercy and compassion. What did you do to him? You crucified him. And what is happening after 2021 years? The same thing is happening. The leaders of the church are crucifying Jesus Christ one more time. But there is a difference. Back then, there was only one Caiaphas. Today, wow, plenty. Back then, there was only one Judas Iscariot who sold his master with 30 pieces of silver. Today, endless Judas. The history is repeating itself. And if we are calling ourselves Christians and followers of Christ, then if we walk in the footprints of the Good Shepherd, then we need to do the will of our Father who art in heaven, not the will of no human being on the face of this planet. We obey God, not people. We have forgotten the Creator, and we have become hypocrites to the creation. And I want to say this. I'll say to everyone that is listening, I'll tell you which universe I come from, my dear friend. I come from the universe that says in the beginning, God, Elohim, created the heavens and the earth. I come from the universe that Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, has created with his word. That is the universe I come from. But I just wonder which universe you come from. I wonder. The end times church. We're going to read from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verses 14 to 22. Again, the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verses 14 to 22. And we will see what kind of, uh, of a church are we living in in the end of times? What has become of the church of Christ in the end of times? I wonder what has become of it. Revelation three fourteen to 22. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could, I could wish you were cold or hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and I have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye, with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has ear, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. In the book of Revelation, which is so relevant for the 21st century, our time and age, my beloveds, in the book of Revelation, when you read in chapter 2 and 3, you will see there are, there, there are seven churches being mentioned in these two chapters, 2 and 3. However, the Lord Jesus, His church is one. And we believe in one holy, 
apostolic universal church. One, because the church is the body of Christ. She is the bride of the groom, of the heavenly groom, Christ the King. So the Lord has only one church. But how come he is mentioning seven? John the Beloved in the book of Revelation is telling us that the only church of Christ, the only bride of Christ is going to go through seven different stages from the beginning of her birth until the end, the second coming of the Lord, where he will take his bride, the church, without a blame, without a blemish, perfect, and bring her into the Father's house where we will live with our God, Jesus Christ, our, our groom, our heavenly groom for eternities to come. Seven stages. All the names are of Greek descent. The, the words are, they come from a Greek language. It begins with Ephesus and it ends with Laodicea or Odyssea. Ephesus means the beloved. Laodicea, it is a compounded word. Two words in one. Leos means nation. Dikia, veered of the road. In the beginning, the Lord Jesus says, my church is my beloved. In the end, my church has veered of the road, denied Jesus. Denied Jesus. And this is the cry. In the wilderness of this world, where is the church of Christ? Where are the leaders? Well, in these verses, we see why the church is so weak. You only live once, my dear friend. And I choose not to die a coward. I choose not to die a coward. Because my God, my Savior, my Redeemer is Jesus Christ. The sovereign authority over every king and ruler of the world. You can kill the flesh. But you cannot touch the spirit. The Lord Jesus, when he was hanging on the cross, he said, Father, into your hand I commit my spirit. Where did the Lord place his spirit? Into the hand of his heavenly Father. And the Lord Jesus said it, No one can take anything away from my Father's hand. And then the following verse he says, I and the Father are one. Meaning he is God. And no one can snatch nothing out of the hand of God. In the hand of Jesus Christ, I commit my spirit. The church of Laodicea, the nation who has veered off the road and walked away. Why have we veered off the road, my beloveds? I'll tell you, I wish I had more time. I wish. But God willing, we'll continue next time if we can't finish it in this evenings. If I ask any one of us, if I ask any one of us, what is the definition of God? Well, God is way, way beyond our intellectual capacity. God is way, way beyond our entire wisdom put together. God is the infinite wisdom, the infinite source of light, the infinite love, the infinite mercy. He cannot fully be uh, comprehended. It is impossible. However, to come down to my, in, you know, minute intellectual capacity, and my uh, weak human level, I will say the following definition. God is love and humility. God is love and humility. God is love and humility. Love is to do with knowledge. 
Humility is to do with wisdom. You see, what leads to love is knowledge. I cannot claim that I love someone I do not know. I can only love someone that I know. I get to know the person, then I am able to love the person. What leads to love is knowledge, but what leads to wisdom is humility, my beloveds. And that is why when you read in the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of John, the Lord Jesus, when he's talking about the church, the house, in the Gospel of Matthew, in the Gospel of John, he says, my father's house is a house of prayer, but you have turned it into a marketplace, buying and selling. In the Gospel of John chapter 2, he says, my father's house is a house of prayer, but you, who is you? The church leaders, that's what he's referring to, the church leaders. But you have turned it into a marketplace buying and selling. And then in the Gospel of Matthew, the Lord Jesus says, my house, not the Father's, my house is the house of prayer. But you, again, church leaders, have turned it, not a marketplace, a den of thieves. You have turned it into a den of thieves. In the Gospel of John, my father's house is the house of prayer, but you've turned it into a marketplace, buying and selling. And in the Gospel of Matthew, my house, I, Jesus Christ, my house is the house of prayer, but you have turned it into a den of thieves. Now, a den, my beloved, is a place where lions live. And lion in the Holy Bible, in, in, the, in the epistle of St. Peter, refers to Satan. Lion devours and kills. It is a den of thieves. My father's house is to do with love. My house, I, Jesus Christ, is to do with glory. What is in the father's house? What should be vividly present in the, fa in the, in the church of Christ? Two things, love and glory. They should be present at all times in the church of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Love, Father's house. Glory, Christ's house. Love, knowledge, glory. What is the glory of Christ? Well, the mother of the sons of Zebedee, James and John, she came to the Lord Jesus when the Lord was talking to them and he said, very soon I'll be handed over to authorities. I'll be persecuted and prosecuted and I'll be sentenced to death. I'll be crucified. I will die, but I will rise from the dead on the third day because it is written about me. She, the mother, out of love and concern for her children, like every mother out there, is concerned for the well-being of her children. She came to the Lord Jesus begging him. She said, Lord, before you go, please, can you guarantee my two sons a position in your kingdom? Can you put my two sons, one on either side of you, right and left, in your glory? Can you put my sons on either side of you in your glory? The, the mother, poor mother, she was not fathoming what she was really saying. But the Lord looked at her heart and saw she meant well. Her intention was good. A good mother caring and worrying about her kids. He said, woman... And he turned to the disciples. He said, can you, can you be baptized with the baptism of mine? And can you drink the cup that I am about to drink? All of them, they said, yes. He said, 
my baptism you shall take on you and the cup that I'm about to drink you will drink also but to put you on either side of me in my glory it is it is not mine but the father who has sent me but my father who has sent me what is the glory of Jesus Christ the cross my beloved the cross that is his glory so he was literally saying to that woman a mother a concerned mother he said woman if i grant you your wish then your sons will have to be crucified on either side of me i won't let that happen i'll do it my way not your way but i will give you your wish but my way jesus and the reason i'm going to give it my way because i saw there was love in your heart woman for your children and truly jesus did it because he is god never fails and he put number 1 was james he was the first martyr to be beheaded in jerusalem for the name of jesus christ and john the beloved the gospel writer the epistle and the revelation writer he was sentenced in exile to a an island in the middle of the mediterranean sea in greece called petmos and he died a natural death there james the first to go and john the last to leave out of the 12 apostles he put james and john on either side of him but his way not the way the woman was thinking the glory of jesus christ otherwise they would have been crucified and counted as thieves and robbers on either side of the lord so what is the glory of jesus the cross and what is the father's house love why when it comes to love the lord jesus said you have made it you have made my father's house a place of a marketplace buying and selling very simple because you do not buy something you do not love you will only buy what you love isn't it my beloveds so when it comes to love there is buying and selling because why would i buy something i don't love and when you're buying something you are dealing with money you're what <laughs> dealing with money Revelation 3:17 No wonder the church is so weak. No wonder the church is so weak. Revelation 3:17 Look what the Lord is talk is saying to the shepherd of Laodicea church. He's not talking to the sheep, he's talking to the shepherd. The Lord Jesus deals with the shepherds not the sheep. But unfortunately, the sh the shepherds of the end of time church are weak revelation 317 because you say the lord is talking here to the to the shepherd of the church of laodicea because you say i am rich have become wealthy and have need of nothing and do not know that you are wretched miserable poor blind and naked who is talking god is talking to the shepherds of the end of time church you guys are saying to me that you are rich and you've become wealthy and you are in need of no one of course because Caiaphas once again has come alive in the end of times and said we don't want Jesus Christ of Nazareth to be king over us we want Caesar Satan to be king over us no wonder the Holy Spirit has been handcuffed and is not able to work in such a rebellious church a church that has sold Jesus Christ for 30 pieces of silver Judas Iscariot is among us in the hundreds and the thousands but I will not be sold and I will not be bought 
Jesus says, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And I'm not talking about every leader. Everyone knows themselves very well. But above all, Jesus Christ knows us more than anyone else, including ourselves. There are some great leaders still in the church. Priests, bishops, cardinals, and great leaders. But unfortunately, they have been suppressed. They have been ridiculed. They have been persecuted. And they have been deposed from the church the moment they speak the truth. For I fear nothing and fear no one. The church in the end of time, it is Laodicea, we are living in the end of times. And what we are seeing around us on a global level, it is nothing short but evil in its core. A new world order, Freemason, new world order. Someone like Bill Gates, someone like George Soros, someone like Klaus Schwab and Anthony Fauci and those who are behind them, Jesus sees you all. I say to all of you, repent before it is too late. A day is coming. Every human being on the face of this planet, regardless your race, regardless your color, regardless your ethnicity, regardless of your religious background, every human being, a day will come. You will have to face your creator and give an account to everything you've done and said. And what have you done for him when he calls you and say, give me an account of what I've given to you, I've made you a steward, and I've given you my property, my possession, and I said, look after it. What have you done with what I have entrusted you with? Where is it? What are we going to say? I just wonder what are we going to say? There is one true divine God that has created everything that is visible and invisible. And this God, for me, is no one but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory and worship and hallelujah to his holy name. The church in the end of times, their God became money. The love that has to be one pillar on this side in the church of, of, of God, that love is supposed to be given to God, no one else, but we have given that love back to people, the creation, and we've forgotten the creator. We loved and worshipped our leaders, and we said, it is them and no one else. We forgot that Jesus Christ is the only one that is worthy of worship and glory and thanksgiving. We started worshiping people, not God. We started loving leaders, not Jesus Christ, who is God in the flesh. No wonder the church is in ruin and turmoil and division. The love has to be given to God the Father. Not to us and not to no one else. No matter how high or low they are, how big or small, how powerful or weak they are, the love is supposed to be given to God the Father. We started buying and selling in the name of God. We turned the house of Jesus' Father into a marketplace. And what did the Lord Jesus do? He overturned all their tables. And he said, out of my father's house. For my father's house is a house of prayer. But you have turned it into a marketplace. Back then, my beloveds, when they used to bring a, a sheep to, to offer it as a sacrifice to, to Yahweh, the God of the Israelites people. 
poor people. That sheep, same sheep. You see, the temple had, the temple had its own sheep. They had their own shepherds. Those shepherds who were minding the sheep, when you read in the Gospel of Luke and, and others, you know, those shepherds who were minding their sheep at nighttime, they were the shepherds minding the sheep of the temple. So, someone um, is, does, is not very rich. Give us our daily bread on a day-by-day -day basis. I, can't, I don't have much money in my pocket. So if you bought exactly the same sheep outside, probably you would have bought it. I'm just giving an example. Probably, let's say you would have bought it for one shekel, or that currency of the time, shekel, or one denarii. But if you buy the sheep from the temple that belongs to the temple, you'll have to pay 10 shekels. Why? Because the high priest prayed over it. This is, this is holy. This sheep is blessed, my, my, my friend. This sheep is blessed because so-and-so, this leader and that leader have prayed on the sheep. It is worth 10 shekels. When you slain the sheep, which Caiaphas has prayed over, God will forgive all your sins. Are you joking or are you joking? Which one is it? So this poor guy knows nothing. Well, when a church leader says something, of course I'm going to obey because the sheep cannot do nothing but follow the shepherd. In fact, my beloved, I'll give you a, a, bit, a piece of information. A sheep has no sense of direction. So when a sheep gets lost, cannot find its way back. But sorry to say this, but I, and I don't mean it in any way wrong or bad. But when a dog loses its, its way, it can find it back again. The dog sniffs and goes back where it came from. But a sheep cannot find its way once it's lost. That's why the Lord Jesus gave us the parable in the Gospel of Luke chapter 15 and said, the good shepherd went out searching for the lost sheep in the wilderness. Why? Because the sheep has no sense of direction. So the sheep got lost in the desert, could not find its way back. And another thing, the sheep, the moment hears the sound of the wolf, it freezes in its place and becomes like a statue out of fear. The sheep, the moment hears the sound of the wolf, becomes a statue out of fear. Tells the, tells the wolf, come and eat me and devour me. Can't move anymore. A sheep without the shepherd is lost and dead. But the Lord Jesus said it, my beloved, when the multitudes gathered around him and he was preaching to them for three days. And after three days, he realized they were hungry. And he said to his disciples, you know, and he said, I need to release them because they are hungry. But the reason why I came and preached to you for three days nonstop, because I showed compassion toward you, my sheep, since I put shepherds to shepherd you, but those shepherds turned out to be hirelings. They were there for wages. They were not there for my sheep. Since I put shepherd, but they came to be false shepherds, then I, Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, came and looked after you myself. Today, exactly, it is happening in our time and age. The very shepherds which the Lord Jesus has placed in his church have falsified the truth and have drifted away from the truth because they said, now we are rich, we became wealthy, and we are no, not, not in need of no one, including God. We are God on earth. And that is why the sheep are hungry and lost. There is only one that is the head of the church, Jesus Christ. All of us are hopeless servants. It is out of the mercy, out of the love and the compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ that he placed someone like me and called me a shepherd. But this shepherd, when Jesus put me here, that does not mean I can do whatever I want. No, 
I can only do what my Jesus tells me to do. The moment I walk away from the Lord, I have destroyed the flock. And I have brought turmoil and division and chaos into the church of Christ. We are all followers. Christianity is about followers, not leadership. There is only one leader, Jesus. And all of us from the highest rank to the lowest are nothing but followers of the only good shepherd who is the head and the only head of the church. My beloved, that love, that divine love, which we were supposed to give it back to God the Father, we gave it and we made people to give it to us as leaders. Don't worry, my dear friend. The Lord Jesus gave me the keys and he said, whatever you loosen on earth, it is loosened on, in heaven. And whatever you tie on earth, it is loosened, it is tied in heaven. Excuse me. But based on what the Lord Jesus said it, based on him, on his word, which is the truth, the Holy Bible. Any shepherd that loses and ties things outside the word of Christ is a false leader. He's not telling you the truth. He's lying to you. When did the Lord Jesus give the keys to Simon Peter? We need to read the Holy Bible, my beloveds. When the Lord Jesus was with the 12 apostles in the Last Supper, the Passover, where the Lord got up in that night and he said, this bread is truly my body and this wine is truly my blood. And he said to them, it is written about me that the shepherd shall be striked and the sheep will be scattered. It is written about me. The Lord is referring to the Old Testament. He is referring to the prophecies of the Old Testament. And what is the prophecy? It is the word of God. God cannot lie, my beloveds. So the Lord said, it is written about me. It is prophesied. It is the word of God that is written in the Old Testament that I, the shepherd, the good shepherd, shall be striked. I'll be crucified. And you sheep, you my apostles, you'll be scattered out of fear. Simon got up and said, Lord, if all of these, meaning his brothers, the other apostles, if all of them deny you, I will not deny you. The Lord, in a, in a nice way, said, Simon, you're talking too big of a word. It is bigger than you. You can't handle what you're saying, my dear Simon. Relax. Take it easy, brother. Yo, bro. Take it easy. Simon didn't get it. He continued on. And he said, even I am with you till death, the death of the cross. I am with you. Wow. He gave Jesus, our Lord, no choice but to say to him, Simon, you've pushed your luck, my dear friend. I'm telling you, tonight, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And Simon did. When the Lord rose from the dead, he called Simon Peter. He said, Simon, son of Jonah, come here. I'm wondering what was Simon thinking? He said, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Simon got the shock of his life. He was thinking that now, since Jesus is calling me to him, he is going to wipe the floor with me. He's going to chop me to smithereens. He's going to put me to shame in front of everyone because he's going to remind me what I said a couple of days ago at the Last Supper. I promised Jesus that I'm with you till death and I failed. I denied him not before a Roman soldier. I denied him before a, a, a woman. And I denied his divinity and humanity. And I swore I do not know this man. Yet in Matthew 16, he said, you are Jesus Christ, son of the living God. 
He, did not, he, he acknowledged in Matthew 16, Jesus Christ, both his divinity and humanity. And before a woman, he denied his divinity and humanity. Where is your promise? So when Simon heard from the Lord Jesus saying to him, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He was shocked, totally unexpected. He said, Lord, I thought you were going to put me to shame. I thought you were going to judge me. I thought you were going to chop me. Do I love you? Lord, you know that I love you. The Lord repeated it three times. And three times Simon said, Lord, you know that I love you. In the last supper, my beloved, Simon said, I am with you, Lord. In the last supper, Simon put himself before the Lord. And anyone, any church leader, and any government, and any human being that put themselves before God, they have to fall and must fall. Because no one comes before God. No one. No one has. No one will ever be able to. And anyone who tries to be before God, that being must fall. Satan was an angel in heaven. He tried to put himself before God. He failed and fell from the highest level to the lowest level. From a beautiful angel to an ugly, foul spirit. So Simon in the Last Supper said, I, then Jesus. And when anyone put themselves before the Lord, they must be put to shame and fall. Simon learned the lesson. After resurrection, Simon come here. Do you love me? Simon said, hang on. In the Last Supper I said, I am with you. I was afraid and denied you before a woman, not, an, not a, an, a Roman soldier. I learned my lesson, Lord. Lord, you know that I love you. The cycle was reversed. Now it is you first. I learned my lesson, Lord. But I learned it the hard way, but it doesn't matter. As long as I've learned it, it is okay. Lord, you know that I love you. Then Jesus gave the keys to Simon. Because a shepherd, a leader in the church that put himself before Jesus Christ must fall and destroys the sheep. But a true shepherd is the one who puts Christ first, then him. Because I only get my strength I only get my wisdom. I only get my energy. I only get my food. I only get my life and my glory and everything from Jesus Christ of Nazareth. No one else. So the leader of Laodicea, you're saying that you are rich and you have become wealthy and you are in need of no one. So you are not in need of God, Jesus Christ, and you want to lead the flock of Christ, and you want to lead the church of Christ without Christ? Have you become the head? Have you lost your mind? Can anyone remove Jesus from his position? Can anyone take Jesus Christ's place? There is only one head to the body. The church is the body of Christ, as St. Paul tells us in Ephesians 5. And Christ is the head of the church. But we've become the head. Come to me. What's your problem? Go and pay this much and I'll give you whatever you want because I've got the keys. Whatever I tie, it's tied in heaven and whatever is loosened is loosened in heaven. We are buying and selling in the house of Lord. We have snatched the love of God the Father and given it to ourselves as leaders in the church. Shame on us. And I'm the number one. Shame on us. Love is supposed to be given back to God only. I don't have time. Time flies when you're having fun, as they say. Glory is the cross. What is cross? Humility. What is humility? Self-denial. 
because the cross is death. And what is death? I'm no longer in existence. When I die, I don't exist anymore. Nobody will see me on the face of this earth. So what is, what is death in the biblical language, in the biblical terminology? Death equals self-denial. Self-denial is humility. What is humility? Humility leads you to wisdom and knowledge leads you to love. The moment we snatch the knowledge of God and give it to us, we are making people knowing us, not God. A leader that makes people love him and not Jesus Christ is a failure of a leader. And he's nothing but a miserable being. He is another Caiaphas. Caiaphas made the people of his time love him, not Yahweh. That's why they were enslaved. And that's why the church is being enslaved one more time by Caesar. The ruler of the world, Satan. Because the church leaders have bought, sold their Christ. Sold him. Sold him for their prestigious places. Sold him for their thrones. Sold him for their crown of glories. Sold him for their stars on their shoulders. Sold him for their fame, name. Sold him for their own empires which they have created and established on earth. Today, the church is measured to be either rich or poor by what it has in properties. My goodness, we've lost the plot. Okay, let's come and see what this church is all about. How many churches, how many buildings do you have? How many properties do you have? How many businesses do you have? How much money are you generating? Whoa, you're making millions and billions. Now that's what I call a church. Look, honestly, I am lost for words. Nowadays, the church is being seen as poor and weak. When it has faithfuls for Christ. Ah, oh, you're old fashioned. Ah, oh, you're so behind. Are you still kneeling and praying? Are you still fasting? Are you out of your mind? Enjoy life, brother. Enjoy life. What fasting? What kneeling? What praying? Shame on such leaders and shame on such so called Christianity. We have betrayed our master. We have betrayed our Lord. We have sold him for peanuts. We have sold him for a second of pleasure and lust in the core of Satan. Shame. No one can take me away from my sweetheart, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, of Nazareth. My God, my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer, the one and only. I am in love with you in purity and holiness. You are the love of my life, Jesus. And I will always shout hallelujah to your holy name. For as long as you give me the breath of life, for as long as you give me the strength of your, your divinity, for as long as you show me the way and grab my hand and lead me and guide me, I am indebted to you, my sweetheart Jesus, forever and ever and eternities to come. Amen. And a million zillion amens after that. We have snatched the glory of Christ away from him. Therefore, his house, we have turned it into a den of thieves. Because we stole it. We are thieves. We stole the glory of Christ. Meaning, 
when somebody comes and says to me, you are, you are a holy man, you are a faithful leader, you are this and you are that, sorry, I am nothing, I am nothing but a sinner, I am nothing but a blind person, I am nothing but a useless, hopeless servant of Jesus Christ, do not, glo do not glorify me, glory must be given to one name only, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the crown of our heads. Amen. Amen, my beloved. Glory is given to Christ and Christ only. Wake up, you sleepy church. Today, as a church, we are so concerned about our, as someone said it, but it's biblical. We are so concerned about our bank accounts on earth more than our bank accounts in heaven. Everyone, those who know themselves very well, they are concerned about their empire. This is my throne. This is my territory. No one comes in. If anybody tries to come in, I will chop their head. Excuse me, my dear friend, I'll tell you one thing. If you are seeking Christ, and if you are seeking the throne of Christ, I'll tell you where the throne of Christ is. If you are truly seeking Christ, then your job on earth as a leader is nothing but a beggar. We need to walk barefooted, knocking at the door, at the door of the hearts of people, begging for the love to give it back to God. What has happened and has become of us, we have lost the plot. It does not take a genius to figure out what is happening in the world. Please guys, so don't come and say the bishop said and the bishop did. Just look in the social media platforms. There are re renowned doctors and scientists and professors telling you what is happening. And someone like Bill Gates to come and say that we need to cap the world's population. Who do you think you are, you lost soul? Who do you think you are? Are you trying to be God? Shame on someone that tries to be God. Shame on you. But I'll tell you one thing. That day will never happen for you, my dear friend. If you are gaining your power from Satan, I'm telling you, your God, Satan, is, un is trampled under the foot of my sweetheart, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to his holy name. And when Jesus says, open your mouth, no one can shut it. With all love and respect, I'm saying it. The truth hurts, doesn't it? Winston Churchill, who was the prime minister of Great Britain during World War II. Winston Churchill said something extremely profound. He said, the most powerful thing in the world is the truth. And that is why it is quite often being surrounded by a bodyguard of lies. The most powerful thing in the world is the truth. That is why it is quite often being surrounded by a bodyguard of lies. Today both on church level and world level are trying frantically to surround the truth by a bodyguard of lies. But I'll tell you one thing, the truth will always be the truth. For the truth, Jesus said it, and I am the truth, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Can you hide the sun when it shines? Can you hide the light when it shines on you? No matter what you do, no matter how much darkness you try to bring onto the, onto the world, the moment the sun shines, that darkness is decimated and it is gone for good. Jesus Christ is the truth, is the light of the world, is the sun, S-U-N, of righteousness and healings in its wings. And he is the sun, S-O-N, of God. And he is God revealed in the flesh. I love you, Jesus. I love you, my Lord. Let me live hungry. 
Let me live naked. Let me live afflicted. Let me live rejected. I rather be rejected, afflicted, and deposed from the church and than to lose you, my Lord. Because the moment I lose you, I've lost everything forever. Therefore, I, sh I will lose the whole world and its lust and temptation just to gain you, my Jesus. I will never swap Jesus for nothing. And nothing. I live only once. And in Jesus' mighty name, I will not die a coward. People should be given the, cho the choice. People should be given a freedom to decide for their well-being. Governments are playing the role of God. Governments did not create me to, die, to tell me how to live. And neither church leaders created me to tell me how to live for Jesus Christ. You were supposed to feed me the manna, the true blood, the true body that came from heaven. But you, instead you fed me poison and lies, twisted, twisted statements. I'm not angry. It's the seal, it's the zeal for the, for the house of the Lord that is making me cry out. I'm not angry. In fact, this kind of an anger, the Holy Bible calls it holy anger. It's not about me, it's about the Lord. And we all need to be zealous for the Lord. All of us, all every Christian, and everyone who is seeking the truth, everyone who is in search of the light, should be zealous. We're not slaves. And when the Son, S-O-N, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and when the Son sets you free, then you are truly free. He who has the Son has life. And he, has, he, and he who does not have the Son has no life in him, but rather the wrath of God is bestowed upon him. When the Son sets you free, you are truly free. We have stolen the glory of Christ. You know why? Because we were not ready to sacrifice for him. You see, it is too much to give up my throne. It is too much to give up my empire. It is too much to give up my bank account that has millions and, and billions in it. It is too much to give it up for Jesus. You know what? It doesn't make sense. I'm, I'm living in a mansion. I'm living in linen and gold. I'm living in, luxu in luxury. I, am, I have everything around me, everything I need. Everyone is worshiping me. It doesn't make sense to give up on all this wealth and treasure and whatever. And to follow Jesus and be ridiculed, persecuted, rejected, deposed, and crucified. Doesn't make sense. Some people, they just don't have it in them. They can't go that extra mile. Why would I do that for you, Jesus? What am I going to get? Jesus, I know you are God, and I know you are this and this and this, but you know what? I can't give up on all this. It's just too much. I can't. If I follow you, I have to deny myself. Then who's going to glorify me? Who's going to come and bow before me? Who's going to come and kiss my hand and my feet? No one. In fact, they're going to ridicule me and spit on me and, and give me some foul language and stab me in the back and throw me in the street. I can't do that. But woe unto you leaders when Jesus calls you to him to give account to what he has, in, what he has entrusted you with. Woe unto you. There, when you face your master, neither your throne, neither your empires, 
neither all the wealth you have in the bank accounts and the gold and the linen, none of that is going to come to your rescue. The only one is going to come to your rescue, my dear friend, is the Lamb of God who carries away the sins of the world. All glory to His holy name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my Lord, my God, my crown of glory. It is only Him, no one else. So it's up to you. Everyone is free what to choose. But the moment we choose, we are no longer free. A lot of people ask this question, are we free or are we driven? No, my dear. You are free until you choose. The moment you choose, you are now no longer free because whatever you chosen, you have to be responsible for and accounted to. The seven stages of the church in the book of Revelation begins with Ephesus, the beloved, ends with Laodicea, the one who has denied Jesus Christ, her bridegroom, and the, and, the, and the head of the church. Look, my beloved, where Jesus is in accordance to the first stage of his beloved church, Ephesus. Look at it. Revelation 2.1. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, this is the Lord Jesus talking to John the Beloved. To the angel, angel means the leader of the church. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. And the Lord goes on and he explains what the golden lamp stands. He says the seven golden lamp stands are the seven churches. And the seven stars are the seven leaders of the church, of these churches. So what is he walking? He is walking in the midst of the golden lamp stand. He is in the middle of his church. Why? Because it is his beloved. Why was the church at the first century his beloved? Because from the highest... Simon, Peter, Andrew, Philip, all these hierarchies, all these leaders of the church, did they have limousines? Did they, were they wearing gold and linen and diamond? Did they have millions in their bank accounts? Did they have empires? Did they sit on high places and made people kiss their hands and feet? No. They were walking in the streets. From one village to another, from one corner to another, from one street to another, like beggars, if you had looked at them, you wouldn't even, you know, say a street beggar is better looking than them. A street beggar is richer than them. And these were the leaders of the church of Christ in the beginning, so humble, so down to earth, so self-denied themselves for the sake of the glory of Christ. They did everything to give glory to Jesus Christ and to bring that love back to God the Father. That's why Jesus was pleased with his church. And where was he? In the midst of it. I can assure you, my beloved, if Jesus Christ was in the midst of his church today, there is no power in heaven, nor on earth, nor beneath it, to close the, the, the door of the church. But why are the doors of the churches closed today? Because they have turned into den of thieves. That's why Jesus is allowing it. It is a twist of an ear for so-called Christians. And it is a slap across the head for us to teach us not to do this one and any, any, any other times. Don't ever deny your Jesus and say you are rich and you are wealthy and you don't need no one. I'll show you what's going to happen to you when you walk away from Christ. Satan will devour you. Satan will enslave you. That's why the churches are closed. It's the doing of Satan. It's not pandemic. Come on, please, guys. Speak honesty and truth once in your life. Be men. Even if you are a woman, be a man. Don't take it out of context. I'm talking about guts. Have guts. If you're a woman, stay a woman. Please don't change. And if you're a man, please stay a man. Don't change. But have guts. 
The church doors are closed because in Ephesus, he was in the midst of his church. In Laodicea, our time and age, 21st century now. Look where Jesus is. Revelation 3.20. Behold, the Lord is talking. Jesus Christ is talking himself, no one else. Behold, I, Jesus Christ, I stand at the door and knock. We have kicked Jesus out of his own house. And we have placed ourselves in his place. We've kicked him out and we've taken his position. Shame on us. Shame on us all. Jesus, in the end of times, is standing outside, knocking at the door. He's begging us, please open the door. Don't let, leave me outside. Why have you denied me? Why have you betrayed me? Why have you sold me for the leisure and the pleasure of the world? Why have you swapped me with Satan? Why did you say we want Caesar to be king over us? We don't want Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Why? What have I done to you? I am all love. I am all mercy. I am all kindness. I am healing. I am light. I am life. I am everything you need and lack. Why? We've kicked him out of his own house. The very house that he established with his own blood on the cross on Calvary. We've kicked him out. <laughs> We've became Christ on earth. And we are still wondering, why is this happening to us? Of course it's going to happen. You see, when we walk away from Jesus, there is only one other authority, and that is Satan, darkness. If anybody says, I am free, he's been deceived. There is no freedom. You're either under the wing of Christ, or you're either under the foot of Satan. Which one you want? You choose. We are free. We can choose. I'll leave you with this, my beloved, and I know I've taken too much of your time, and I'm extremely happy that I've done so. That was a joke, but it's a good one. <laughs> to all my beautiful boys and girls, all the young men and women, you are my sons and daughters. I beg you, I beg you, do not be conformed to the world, but rather transformed by the renewal of your mind. Do not, my beautiful daughter, don't focus on the way you look and dress. Do not imitate the world. Do not show your body to the world. Do not worry about your beautiful outer appearance. Be concerned of your inner beautiful appearance. Let Jesus see you beautiful from inside, not outside, my sweetie. You don't need to do Botox. You don't need to do facial changes so that people say, oh, you look beautiful. What, however God created you, you are already beautiful. You don't need to change nothing. My beloved Christians, the reason why we are going through this turmoil, because we have walked away from Jesus. Leaders and followers. But it begins with the leaders. If the leaders were true leaders, they would have fed the followers Christ. But they fed the followers nothing but lies. And they made the sheep scatter and lose their sense of di direction and orientation. But I beg you, as a spiritual father, as a, as a useless and unworthy servant in the house of the Lord Jesus, I beg you, my beautiful daughter, be beautiful for your Jesus, not for the world. My son, you don't need to show nothing. Let Christ see that you have a heart for him. Let Christ see that you have a place for him inside of you. Open your heart. Invite Jesus and say, Lord, I have shut the door in your face. You have kicked you out. You've been knocking on the door of my heart all my life, saying to me, son, don't go in those dark alleys. Don't take drugs. Don't take alcohol. Don't take this. Don't chase that.
Come back to me, my son. I have purchased you with my own blood, which is my life. I beg you, son. Come back to your Jesus because you will never find anyone that loves you more than me. And you will find no one that is loyal to you more than me. And you will find no one that knows you more than you, more than me. You will find no one that died for you more than me. Come back to Jesus, my beloved children. And say, Lord, have mercy on us. We repent before you. I beg you. Uh, you know what? I'm going to kneel and I want everyone to kneel. I want everyone to kneel. We are begging the Lord Jesus to have mercy on us. need to pray we need to fast and we need to repent for Jesus Christ to have mercy on us all you can fight whichever way you want to fight you cannot overcome the enemy you can only overcome the enemy with prayer and fasting and the Lord Jesus said it very clearly very clearly he said it this kind does not Go out unless you pray and fast. It is through prayers and fasting we overcome the snares of Satan and the powers of these foul spirits that have been released in the world. Repent, my beloved. Pray and say, Lord Jesus, I am sorry, forgive me. Have mercy on me, son of David, for I have been blind, I have been misled. I have been so far and distant from you, Lord Jesus. Forgive me for my sins, those that I am aware of and those that I am not aware of, but you are aware of everything, Lord. Have mercy on me, Jesus Christ. Bestow your mercy on your church, on the world, even if I say, but I am saying it out of love and out of humility. I am praying for every church leader to be awakened by the love and the mercy and the compassion and the blood of Christ that was shed on, that was shed on Calvary. I am praying for every church leader to come back to our senses. We need to come back to our senses and realize at the end of the day, it is the grave. And in the grave, we will take nothing from us, nothing with us. We will take nothing. Everything will stay here. The cross the crown, the glory, the, with the wealth and the empires, everything will stay here. We were born out of the womb of our earthly mother with, an, with nothing. And it is surely we're going to go back to our mother nature with absolutely nothing. We came with nothing. We're going to go with nothing. But the only thing we're going to take with us is our deeds. What have we done for Jesus? And the question to be answered will be remained in the end. Just the Lord, like the Lord Jesus said to Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? That question will be asked of every one of us. Jesus in the end will say, do you love me? What am I going to say? No, Lord, I swapped your love with the pig's field. I swapped your love with a Star City Casino. I swapped your love with clubbing. I swapped your love with drinking and dancing and nakedness and drunkenness and lustful life. I swapped your love with filth. No, my beloveds. 
We cannot afford to swap Jesus with nothing. The moment we lose him, we're finished forever. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only truth. And Jesus is the only life. Come back to him. Say sorry. Jesus, forgive me. I am not worthy to be your son once again. But make me as a servant in your house. And you will see the father running. Frantically. And meeting you halfway on Calvary. Hugging you and embracing you. And saying to you. You were my son. You are my son. And you'll always be my son. I will embrace you in your filth. Because so God loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And the word so meant the way the world it was. God loved it. The way it was in its filth, in its dirt, in its deception. God still loved it and gave the only most precious thing he had, his beloved son, to redeem and save the whole world. He will embrace us in our dirt and filth and ugliness and say, you were my son, you are my son, and you'll always be my son. Clothe him with the outfit of righteousness, the dress of the kingdom of God. Give him new shoes, a new life, a new attitude, a new behavioral pattern, a new start. Detach him from this condemned earth and bring him into the holy land. And then put a ring in his hand. Authority, you are the son of God. This is the authority that God gave to all of us who believe in his son, Jesus Christ. We are the children, the sons of God. And then the, 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 um, the fatted calf has been slain. Jesus, the Lamb of God, slain for the redemption of the world. The Father is embracing us. All we need to do is turn around and face Him and run to Him. Don't ever run away from your Lord, but run to Him. Jesus said, I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. And since I am here, that means all of you are sinners. There is no one righteous. There is no one good but God. And that's why I came, because all of you have sinned and veered off the road and have fallen short of the glory of God. That's why I have come and revealed myself in the flesh to redeem you and bring you back to holiness, to deity, to divinity, to life everlasting, sitting at the right hand of the Father in His glory. Come back to the Lord as you are. In your nakedness, let Him cover your nakedness. Don't try to do it yourself. Don't try and fix your mistakes. You cannot. Jesus is the only one that can. Come back to the Lord, my beloved. Now it is the time to repent and ask for forgiveness. And I'm begging you. I am begging you. I want everyone that is listening, and I want you to share this with everyone around the world. I want everyone on a daily basis. I am begging everyone, wherever you are, drop everything you've got. Make time for Jesus, for, the, for Jesus to make time for you. Come, let us come together in unity, in oneness, in unity of heart and language and mind and soul and spirit and thought. And bring glory and give thanks, giving to the one and only Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We will pray so that Jesus have mercy on his church and on the world. And Jesus can do it. This is our fight. And this is the only way we can be victorious. Let us be like the people of Nineveh. The people of the Ninevites. When Jonah was sent to them from the God of Israel. He said the God of Israel is saying to you. That your wrongdoings have reached my throne. And I am absolutely angry. I will turn your country up on your heads. If you don't repent from here to 40 days. The king of Nineveh said. Before 
We fought the enemies of the world with swords and spears and weapons. But this God, we cannot fight him with sword and spears and weapons. The only way we can fight this God is by repenting and coming down from our high places and coming down from our high horses and kneeling and sitting on the ground and, 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 and dressing up in sackcloth and sitting on ashes. And we're going to fast and pray. It is through prayers and fasting we're going to win the battle with this God. And it is through our prayers and fasting and seeking repentance and forgiveness from the Lord. We will win this battle. We will make Jesus once again to come from the outside into the center of his house once again. And let us make Laodicea Ephesus. Jesus can do it. But we need to forgive, ask for forgiveness. We need to repent. We need Jesus, my beloveds. You can pray your way, whatever makes you comfortable. You pray the way that you are comfortable. You can go and say a couple of words, Lord, have mercy. Lord, come to our rescue. Whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you peaceful, whatever makes you, you know, you know whatever makes you um, I don't know. Honestly, I'm lost for words. I'm lost for words. Please do forgive me. But I'm urging everyone, please, let us come into the unity of Christ. There is no time to sleep. Wake up. There is no time to rest. We need to be uncomfortable. We cannot be comfortable anymore. We cannot afford to be comfortable anymore and sleepy. We cannot. It is the end of times. Satan is devouring the children of the kingdom. Satan is devouring the church. The, the church is in turmoil. The church is in ruin. The church is in division. The church has lost her sweetheart, Jesus Christ. Satan has blinded the world and the Christian world together. We need to be alert and uncomfortable. You've been crying out saying, children of mine, what has happened and become of you? Come back to the bosom of your Jesus, the one who loves you the most and died and saved you and redeemed you. Come back for the Lord Jesus to have mercy on us all. Amen. I'd like to give you some encouragement, biblical verses to encourage all of us. There are only very few that I have selected. There are so many encouraging verses in the Holy Bible. Here are some that I wanted to share with you, my beloved. You can write them down if you wish. The Gospel of John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. The Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses, verse 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will, be, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Amen. Isaiah 41.10 Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Hallelujah. Romans 8.28 And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. To those who are the called according to his purpose. Joshua 1.9 Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Romans 
15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Jesus will come and heal Australia and he will heal the whole world if the Christians truly come back to him. Isaiah 41, 13. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. First Peter chapter 5, verses 6 to 7. Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Amen. Psalm 94, verses 18 to 19. If I say, my foot slips, your mercy, O Lord, will hold me up. In the multitude of my anxieties within me, your comforts delight my soul. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord, my beloved. And I'll leave you with this lastly, Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. And God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away forever and ever and ever more. Amen. To all my beloved Christians and to all my beloved Australians, I'm an Aussie, mate, and I'm proud to be an Aussie. I love this country. It is my country. Most of my life, I have spent it in this country. I love this country. I pray for this country and the people of this country. They mean the life for me. And I am willing to put my life on the line for the well-being of every Australian. Without any differentiation. And when we cry out, it is out of love. But I will, sell, I will tell the truth and I'm not going to be afraid of no one. What is happening in the world is nothing short of evil. Because we have denied the creator of this universe. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Cheer up. Smile, be strong, be courageous, and say, I have Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I fear nothing. For the blood of the Lamb of God defeats every evil doing of Satan. And those who follow Satan, 